because what the black man and black woman are able to do and accomplish when in love and working in concert with each other is this country and this world's worst nightmare. The things that one black family can accomplish could change the world. I will never change my mind about that. It's dark as obsidian, and it light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillar of the desert need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome back to my spot. Room 303, if you are new, welcome to my crew. But my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to my I Divested, but then I Undivested episode of The Wireless Woman, where I will tell you all about my adventures in the land of divestment and back again. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. It is time to call the roll, so I need all of my swirlers and interracial daters to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. All right, do me a favor on your way into this episode and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel. to leave your comments and to share this content. Also, go ahead and check out my description box below. It has links on how you can support my channel should you choose to, and also other links on any information I may share during the content of this episode. So let's go ahead and get into it. I divested you guys. So my first marriage, I got married when I was 21. I got married very young. And so that is very young. Okay. Anyone that thinks you're going to be able to grow from basically a teenager into an adult with the same person and it not require a massive amount of patience and flexibility is delusional. Okay, but I got married young and I got married to a non-black man. He was a Hispanic man. And as I've gotten older and developed a better awareness of race and ethnicity, I recognize now that he was a white man. He was a white Hispanic man. You know, you could be black and Hispanic, white and Hispanic. And I say this on my channel, you know, you could be Asian and black 
You can be Asian and white, but there are only two races, black and white. That's why whenever a Hispanic or Latin person is black, they will call them Afro-Latina. Afro, you know, they add that preface to whatever their ethnicity is so that you know for certain that they're black, that their skin is black. So, you know, while we have all these different colors and hues of people, you pretty much kind of know who's for and against you based on that. You know, people who will not accept any level of blackness are letting you know they're white. Okay, if it comes down to it, you, you kind of get to choose one or two of those bubbles. Your ethnicity can be multifaceted. You can belong to two or more ethnicities. You can be biracial. You can belong to both. But whiteness is a protected class. And if you identify on any level as white, you're white. <laughs> so my first spouse was a white man, something that became very apparent over the course of our marriage. Just as a side note, I think a lot of black people come into interracial relationships having a much more multifaceted, complex view of what ethnicity is. Because within our own race, we get to claim so many other ethnicities. Oh, I got Indian in my family. Oh, I'm mixed with. So for us, because blackness is not a protected class, like we've never had countries fight whole wars for racial purity, you know, to remain and retain blackness. So for us, it's a much more fluid concept. So I don't think we always have a very good understanding, a very clear understanding of race when we get into interracial relationships. And that's the reason why they can have dynamics to them that we may not be prepared to actually handle the reality of, especially as the relationship builds in its complexity, like once you get married or once you bring children into the mix, you know, dealing with in-laws. Because of the way I grew up in a multiracial, multicultural environment, I was what they deemed academically gifted. So, you know, I had Asians and Hispanics and whites more often than not in my classes than blacks. And I'm always astonished when people say that blacks only make up, you know, 12% of the population. Cause I'm like, I know it's more black people than that. But when you get into these PWIs, when you get into these, you know, certain certain circles of people, you started to realize how thin the area is up there, how, how thin the blackness gets. You know, when you, I'm, I'm a person who likes different types of music. So when I go to Rascal Flats concerts or Third Eye Blind concerts, or, you know, when I, when I get out there, then I start to see what a minority we really are, you know, in black spaces, they're so saturated with blackness. It's easy to miss the fact that we are still just that drop in the bucket of whiteness, at least here in this country. And that's too why I feel a lot of black people need to get to Africa at some point in their life. You need to get to a place where the space is dominated by blackness in order to connect with something in you that's just been denied, not just your whole life, but also throughout throughout the development of our race, Black Americans. Like I said, Black Americans, our trajectory is something different than Black Africans. So we, in order for us to connect to an identity that we've been denied here in this country, you know, I think we have to at least see Africa. I think white people should go to Africa. I think they should be in a space where they are not the dominant influence and culture to connect with something in them. I got married young to a white Hispanic and had a relatively good marriage. Like what black people value in a good relationship is different than what other cultures value in their marriages and their relationships. So you also have to be careful with that. You know, when I say I had a good marriage, what I mean is he didn't beat me. Oh, to beat me. He didn't verbally abuse me. Like those elements were never a part of my marriage. Now, I think 
if black women are going to be serious about divesting. Like if this is really the conversation we're going to start to have, then we have to be taught how to date, taught how to marry outside of our race. Just like any other skill set, just like if you wanted to move from a teaching job to a finance job, just like if you wanted to move from a law enforcement job into a customer service job, the skill sets that you have built up to be a great cop don't work in fulfillment. I enjoy divesting. I have always dated outside of my race and despite what the title of this episode says, I always will. And I'll tell you a little bit later my reasons for that. The only big, big, big complaint that I have with divestment on a on a larger macrochasm is the fact that you you do have to lose a certain amount of your identity in order to embrace that skill set. Black men aren't uh, real with us. They are not upfront with us when they talk about the value that they place on whiteness and white women and being in white spaces and the access that they believe that interracial relationships puts them in proximity to. Like it is politically motivated. All of these conversations about how white women and Hispanic women are more submissive than y'all are. That's That's not entirely true. They're more submissive than we are under certain circumstances. And because they have access to men of no color, because they actually have open access to privilege, they don't have these these elements of struggle built into their environment. And they and they're not offered struggle love by black men like we are. They are not offered that they are not. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some misogynistic, narcissistic white men that treat the women of their own culture and race very poorly. That would make even a black man and all of the social regression that comes along with being connected to a black man appealing. Now, there are some women of other cultures that are so heavily ostracized by the men of their culture that... The fact that blackness is something that they can embrace, you know, like your Jenny Mize and, you know, you have some women who have been willing to embrace blackness in order to be in proximity to black men. And then you have some that don't necessarily embrace the blackness, but they do embrace black men. But you have to know that these are women who have, for whatever reason, been ostracized by men of their own culture, same as black women who divest. If black women were having great experiences with black men, they would not. I don't think I don't think like for all these conversations that we have about black men, they are some of the most beautiful, you know, just gorgeous, intelligent, articulate men. Like when they're on their shit, I mean, they're they're unmatched, just like a black woman. They come out of us so Like I said, we can only disparage them so much before we have to join them (laughs) in the, you know, in the degradation and debauchery, the synergy that black people have when we're together, you know, the dominance, the, the, the brilliance that we have is something that anybody would want to join themselves to. But like I said, it's political when black men put black women in a place of being undesirable while they are experiencing such a high level of desirability that is politically motivated. Honestly, if you're going to date out, you have to be careful on that end as well, because a lot of times the men of other races or other cultures are getting you at a discounted rate. At least that's the belief system. You don't want a bottom shelf bread. You you don't want to get these guys who really are just an extension of the same white male patriarchy. There are some people that are going to see you as a lick, black women. So you have to be careful in divestment to know what you're looking for, or else you could end up with a more oppressive man who's not black. 
because this man's going to have access to wealth. This man's going to have access to privilege that you don't. Like my interracial marriage was one thing, but baby, that interracial divorce, oh, they handed me the business on that. And if you look at some of these divorces, you'll see a different dynamic. You know, what Melinda Gates got, what Jeff Bezos' wife got, what Elon Musk's wives have gotten, is something totally different. But then when you turn that coin and look at what Robert De Niro's wife got out of her 20 plus year marriage, you begin to see that it's a little bit different. These white women get a bag off of their divorces to black men. These white women get a bag off their divorces to white men. But black women, black women, if you choose wrong and you connect yourself to a man, black or white, who isn't committed enough to staying in the marriage and supporting you for life, you're not going to cash out of these divorces and these breakups. You're not going to get the Kim Kardashian treatment. You're not going to get the Brittany Renner treatment. You're not, you're not going to get that. These women that you see getting all this child support, baby, there is, it, it, look it up for yourself. See what black women are getting out of these settlements in divorces. Even Dr. Dre's wife, who's not black, didn't get what a white woman, white, just a non, non-ethnically ambiguous woman would get. So we're actually looking for spouses, relationships, meaning, and that's the reason why our standards for what we want out of our relationships has to be so much higher than the women of other racial and cultural groups because what we get in return, our return on that marriage investment is so little compared to theirs. I promise you, baby, that divorce, that that black alimony, it don't, mm -mm. that's why a lot of times when you marry a man, whether he be black or white, he will purposefully put himself in the position because you are more of an asset as a black woman to him as an earner than you are as a housewife. Like, honestly, he can ride that bag. You're not going to be able to get him off of that ride because you end up having to pay him. Mary J. Blige had to pay. Sherry Shepard had to pay. We're, we're not getting the same marriage that other women are buying into. So that's what I'll say about divestment. Like, I'm not going to get deep into the mechanics of my relationship, what the sex was like, what's different in the relationships, because they're, they're all really very unique. I had great sex with a white husband great sex with a black husband. I'm, I'm not going to be with you unless all this hitting for what it's hitting for. By now we should know. A man is a man is a man is a man. White men have access to more resources. And so they're able, just like white women, to provide a more, a deeper level of comfort and a more pleasurable experience when it comes to dating them. I think it's unfair to compare these two male groups when one is being oppressed by the other. But if we're going to be oppressed by our own men. I should have locked you up and just let you out to work. The day you plan for me is the one you're going to rot in. And this is me going back into my reasons for why I will always continue to date outside of my race is because if you're going to be oppressed by the men of your own racial group, then you might as well open yourself up to accessing men of other races as well. Because at this point, as black women, we're all getting tricked off on. Like we're, we're getting tricked off on by all groups of men at this point. So it really kind of doesn't make a difference. But because... I have been outside of our community. I think it allows me to have a lot more standards than I would if I think I had only stayed within my race. Like I had a dude in the club. I had this raggedy bastard walk up on me in the club. Like, I don't know what he thought him just being a black man offered to me in the way of security as a woman. But, you know, he was like, you, you way too dark to be that bougie. 
okay, like, I guess my darkness was supposed to make me more available to him. So I do think that divesting and dating out of your race, it gives you some experiences with men of different backgrounds, different resources, you know, it, it changes your mindset about what you're worthy of and what is accessible for you because when you go into other cultures, you don't find the same male female dynamic. You know, one third, it's moved from one fourth into one third of black men are incarcerated. A large portion of them are not able to provide the basic necessities of life for a family. They're your 50 50 guys. You know, they're the ones that you're going to have to help support the family with. A lot of us aren't going to get married at least not into a viable marriage situation. You know, one of the biggest things that breaks up a marriage is finances. It broke up my first marriage for sure. Even though I was married to a non-black man, I was still the breadwinner of that particular family. I actually had a much better financial dynamic in my second marriage when I came back and married a black man. I undivested, if you will, and in my second marriage, I was married to a black man and I experienced a whole lot more um, commonality, a lot more compatibility in that marriage than I did in my first one. But then the generational curses, the mental health issues, the, the black shit came in with my second marriage. You know, there was a lot more fighting, a lot more just disharmony, a lot of competition, just a lot of very unhealthy family dynamics. Like, oh, it was hard being in a black marriage, having come from a white one or an interracial one. I did like that I didn't have to lose my black identity in order to connect and bond with my husband, but not everything about the black experience and the black culture and the black identity is fun. I, I hated having racist in-laws that talked about me in Spanish, that treated my children differently, that made off-brand comments like, do you want fried chicken because they were serving fajitas? Like, I did not like that clearly. And that element of you are less than us came in a lot during my first marriage, but I had the same thing in my black marriage, the same competitiveness with the women of my husband's, my second husband's family. You know, it was the black competition then. So it was, it was woo fierce. I can't honestly say one is better than the other. They're just different. And each provides you with the opportunity to learn about yourself and know what, know more of what you want, more of what you're willing to sacrifice and offer more of what you shouldn't be putting on the table. Black men are asking for some stuff to be put on the table that a woman just shouldn't put on the table and dating out and marrying out helps you to understand what you're at the table for. Some things are not a negotiation. You're negotiating with a terrorist. Go fuck yourself. No, we don't negotiate with terrorists. When you're dealing with a man that does not allow the relationship to be a place for you both to grow. He can grow. He can advance. He can meet his goals. But it's at your expense. You're expected to stay in one place and provide peace and comfort, complacency and consistency for him. But a big part of providing consistency for him is denying your own inner workings, your own goals and desires and intuition sometimes that you have for yourself as a woman. So I think in my experiences, because I can honestly say I've dated out just as much as I've dated in. And there's some things about dating and marrying and being in love with and raising a family with a black man that just can't be denied. Anybody that's on these divestment channels telling you it's better over there is basing that on some criteria that is superficial at best.
when black men say it, when black women say it, it is bullshit, total, complete and utter bullshit. Because what the black man and black woman are able to do and accomplish when in love and working in concert with each other is this country and this world's worst nightmare. The things that one black family can accomplish could change the world. I will never change my mind about that. I experienced a level of grief when my black marriage dissolved that 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 I didn't experience. It, it was totally unmatched by the way I felt about the dissolution of my interracial marriage. And not necessarily because like one treatment, not the reasons for which the divorce came about. It was just a, the bond was deeper in my black marriage. It was different. You know, there was more at stake. It was tied to the community. It was tied to breaking generational curses. So it hurt a whole lot more. I had to cut the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh out. And that was difficult. Seeing what was happening to his black children, my black children, as a result of this failure, as a, as a result of this divorce, it was hard. It hit my own community. And it was hard. It's a little bit different, I think, when you date out. I think the bond is different. The relationship is different. And all I can share with you is my experience. My first marriage lasted about two and a half years longer to the white man than it did to the black man. It was a much more viable and sustainable marriage, if I'm being honest. We had a much better plan for how to move forward. When you're marrying for the right reasons, which is to have someone that you can build with, you have to look at people who build their community, who build institutions and sustain them. And unfortunately, men of other cultures and other races have done that better than the black man, period. And anybody who wants to argue and go to war with me over that, set yourself off. But it's the truth. So if you want a more viable, sustainable marriage, you, you're going to have to be open to incorporating dating men of other races and cultures. It will raise the whole idea that you approach relationships with. I think it's time for us as black women to hold black men more accountable. I divested. I undivested. I came back. I gave my men the chance that they said I should give them. And now after having divested and undivested, I'm not committed to divestment. I do believe that there are a lot of black men out there that are viable mates and would make excellent husbands. And for those of us who can find and win them, not through competition, but just through presenting ourselves as good mates and them knowing what they want and presenting themselves as great mates, then yeah. By all means, I think it's the deepest, most sensible, practical, important work that we can do as black people is to marry other black people. But if niggas tricking off on you and being on some fuck shit, get you a non-black man. Like loyalty in that situation is for suckers. And baby, you are not a sucker to be licked. So, as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman, telling you to unplug, baby, be unbothered, and unleashed. I look forward to seeing you in the comments. But until the next episode, class is now dismissed. See that I'm empty